G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and in this video tutorial series we're creating a flash cartoon from start to finish and this is the second part in which we're going to be creating the background for the video. So what I've got here is to simplify things, I've kept things uh, quite broken apart, separate from the main animation. I've got a layer on top with characters, which is a graphic clip, so I can you know, bring down the alpha as I work on the background. And I'll lock that, and I'm going to be working on this frame underneath, which is a background. Now, at the moment, it's just a really rough sketch. I've just drawn that in a really light grey. So I'm going to begin by selecting all of this, hitting F8, and turning this into a graphic. And I'm going to call the graphic background. Simple as that. Okay, so it's really sketchy sort of background. I'm not going to go into uh, the techniques in which I would draw something like the background in this case, but I'm instead going to be going into the process of creating the final background out of this sketch. So what have I got here? I've got, so I locked my sketch layer and on a new layer. I'm just going to kind of show you. These are going to be lockers and uh, I'm going to kind of switch it up a little bit, have different things stuck to them, but the base art of them is going to be the same for each of them. I've got windows up here. I've got a bell and a door and the ground. And all in all, that's about it. Pretty simple, right? Okay. So I'm going to, in layers, start to break this apart. So in my bottom layer, I'm going to select my rectangle tool and get rid of the line. I don't want a line. I'm just going to select a random color, nice green, and I'm going to click and drag over the area that's going to be the wall, like this. Okay, then I'm going to get my paint bucket, select this circle gradient here, and paste it there, and paint it there. And selecting this area, I'm going to fill the middle with a, what color should the school be? Let's go with orange. Actually, you know, I'll go with orange, a desaturated orange. And I'll go make the inside slightly lighter and the outside slightly darker like this. And so we see it gives a little bit of a nicer sort of flow. <clears throat> In general, we're going to be working with gradients rather than solid colors because solid colors tend to look a bit harsher. So I'm going to get my rectangle again. Um, first I'll name this layer, I'll call it back wall, hit enter, create a new layer on top of that. And uh, as I work every now and then I might need to kind of see everything in context. So uh, I'm going to wireframe my back wall so I can still see where it is, but not have it cover my entire sketch. So I'll lock that layer. On this next layer, I'm going to do a rectangle about this size. Okay, and I'm going to pull the curve. So by pinching the edge there, um, usually you'd have it the selection tool used by hitting V or hitting that and then you can move it. But what I can do is while I have brush or a rectangle tool selected, I can just hold control and it turns my cursor into that selection tool and I can just click and drag it so it covers that area that I've just created. And uh, you can see that because I had selected my color or my, well, because I had that gradient already selected, it put in that color. Now I'm going to click in here so that that color, that gradient is pasted onto my swatches. You can see it there. But that's not the color I want for the floor. So I'm going to hit V and select the ground and I'm going to change this color. And I'm going to make it a really, really light, desaturated light blue. With it slightly darker on the outside. And that's basically it. I'll uh, remove more saturation. I want it whiter and less blue. And that's kind of what I'm going for. I'm going to click and drag it so it covers a little bit more area. And I'm going to click and drag to select my, where am I? Uh, in this free transform tool, I'm going to click and drag until it shows gradient transform tool. I'm going to click on where I pasted my gradient and it shows the area of the gradient. Now that's too big. I don't want it to cover all that area. So I'm gonna click and drag to make the area smaller and you can see the light area <clears throat> and how much that covers. And then I'm just gonna stretch it and make the middle of it about there. So that way I have a bit more of a, a bit more of a stretched rounded scope of that gradient. So I'll lock that layer. I'm gonna rename it floor 
hit enter and I'm going to take off the wireframe and I can see that these colors mix fairly well. So as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm blocking in bit by bit, blocking in the colors and the shapes of the background. So I'm going to put both of those on wireframe as I continue to do so. I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to make a window. So I'll start off by getting my rectangle. I'm going to select a random color so I won't have a gradient selected and whoops, I should deselect the line because I don't want any lines. Again, select my random color. And with the rectangle, I'm just going to draw a rectangle like this. Then with another random color, I'm going to draw a rectangle inside of it. Like that. Click and drag it to be a better size. Okay, so that's the basis of what I'm going to use for the window. So first I will position it like this. Then I will remove my wireframes and so I can see it in context and I want to find the colors and gradients to make this look a bit better. So I'm going to find, I'm going to get the gradient that I made before and use that as the base, but instead I'm going to change the inside color to a metallic blue and the outside to a darker metallic blue. And I'll paste that in there at the bottom. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's quite simple. And I'm going to paste the same one in the middle, but I'm going to make it darker like this. Okay. Here we go. And I'm going to copy and paste that middle one again, make it slightly smaller like this, put it in the middle with a random color and resize it until I find the size that I'm happy with. Keep going. Okay. So that's the size I want, but that's not the color I want. I want a sky color. Okay. So I'm going to select a solid gradient now <coughs> and paste and paint the solid gradient. So rather than it being a radial gradient, it's the solid gradient, hit V and select it and change the bottom of it to a light blue and the top of it to a slightly more saturated, darker blue. And that's a basic hue of an outside sky. Okay. So you can see that that's kind of how I want the window to look. Now I want to make this a movie clip because I want to mess with it. So I'm going to hit F8, turn this to a movie clip and I'll call this window. Hit enter. <coughs> and now in isolation, I can edit this. Now the cool thing is with this copied and pasted and dragged over here. So if I drag it to the basic kind of position of the window that I sketched on this side, right there, I can hide uh, make those not wireframe anymore. If I go inside here and edit something, let's say I drag this down, you can see that it's edited this clip on the outside. Now I don't actually want to do that. That was just to demonstrate. <clears throat> so I'm going to add a couple of little simple details. First thing, I'm going to come in here and hit I as a shortcut for my eyedropper and select this gray area. Okay. And now you can see the paint bucket has a little padlock on its icon. And if I come here, this little padlock is selected. That means if I hit paste in any area, it will paint the gradient in exactly the same position and they will essentially become one shape. Now I'm going to use that to my advantage with the rectangle tool. You'll notice as I change from brush to rectangle, that padlock is still selected and I'm going to create a bar. Oh no, the padlock didn't work. Okay. It doesn't matter. I'm going to create a window bar like this. And I'm going to hit I and select the area I had before on this edge. And I'm going to paint it in these middle bars. And you can see that that's conformed these middle gradients to the gradient I have on the edges. Okay. So I've got my basic window. Pretty happy with that. Now I want the uh, window to have a bit of perspective. So I'm going to, with the whole thing selected, I'm going to hold control and shift. Now what this does is it allows me to do perspective like that as I drag the corner. Now I'll show you what it happens if I just hold control, it does it a bit different. It's a bit more of a distort. Control and shift makes the edges conform at the same time. So I can do that. Now I only want to do it a teeny tiny bit. See, really teeny tiny bit, maybe a little bit more, just like that. Okay. And now I want to add a little bit of the darker gray underneath just to show that the window is kind of popping out and on a bit of an angle. So I'm going to create a new layer and drag it underneath my window layer, select my rectangle and I'll eyedropper this gradient here 
And with the rectangle tool, I'm just going to... Oops. I really don't want a line. I'm going to draw a rectangle underneath. And I'm going to use that same tool that I just used before, the perspective tool. So holding control and shift and dragging the bottom one in like this. See, so I've created another perspective. And I'm going to click and drag this up to make it shorter. And you can see how quite easily and quite quickly I've added another set, uh, section of dimension. So I'm going to copy and paste that gradient. And I am pretty happy with how that's turned out. <coughs> so there we go. Quite simple. That's my window. Nothing too complex about that. Now the next thing I want to do is add something called ambient occlusion. So at the moment, these windows are just kind of plonked on the wall and they don't look like they're a part of that wall at all. They don't look like they're touching it or on it or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is go inside this window movie clip. I'm going to create a new layer underneath and locking the two top layers, I'm going to start doing a few little fancy things. I'm going to select a rectangle and pick a random loud color like this orange. I'm going to draw a shape like that. Okay, pretty happy with that. Now I'm going to use my line tool to draw a direct line whoops, from corner to corner through as a cross through this material. Okay, now bear with me, this is a little weird. So I'm going to wire skin these top layers and what I've done essentially is segment this so I can separate separate it. So those lines separate these areas and it allows me to paint them different colors if I choose to. Okay, so that that's the purpose of those lines. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is select a gradient, this normal default straight gradient. So I can paint it in there. So as you can see, I can paint in all the edges and I've got this effect of having it kind of go around like that. And if I make the window, uh, take away the wireless from the window, you can see how that kind of works, how already I've given it a bit of a, bit of a feel where it looks like it's kind of sitting on that area. So I'm going to use that to my advantage. So I'm going to select this back area with the gradient. I'm going to have the outside of the gradient, which is this white. I'm going to make it black, but alpha it to 0%. Okay, and you can see now it looks like a bit of a shadow. Now I'm going to select this again. I'm going to drag this black, the solid black, in towards the edge. And I'll drag this alpha bit in again a bit more. You can see how I've created this thick sort of shadow. Dragging this whole thing down a little bit and selecting this inside black, I'm going to bring the opacity to, say, 30%, hit enter, and I've created a bit of an ambient occlusion shadow. Now, I don't want to shade it in solid black because shading in solid black against orange can look pretty yucky. So I'm going to select this black and bring it into a dark, dark orange or a brown, really. Make both of them like that. Then with it selected, I'm going to go across here where it says line fill color and hit this cross off box. And that removes the lines that I've painted. And now if I just fit this, how I want it, I've created an ambient occlusion around this window. Again, control shift perspective drag it in so it fits the shape of the window and it removes it, the uh, evenness from the top but that doesn't really matter because the top's not seen. So I can go out of here and if I zoom out, fit in window, you can see how very quickly this window actually looks a part of that wall. Quite simple, huh? Cool. Okay, so I've got my, I'm going to rename this Windows, I'll spell it correctly, floor and my back wall. So I'm going to lock these and wireframe so I can see the sketch underneath. So it's starting to come together fairly quickly. I'm just going to reposition this Windows to fit the sketch a little more. Okay, now, wireframe and lock. Next thing I want to do is the bell. So let's do this with an oval tool. I'm going to select my 
Oops. Gradient. Uh, that's why it's being weird. I need a new layer. There we go. I'll call this bell. Hit enter. Okay. So with my gradient selected, I will drag a circle. Now you can see that it can go all weird. I want to hold shift so that it locks it to a perfect circle and create the base of the bell. I'm going to select that, hit F8 and turn this into a movie clip called bell. Hit enter. Now I can go inside and edit it. First thing I want to do is select the gradient colors. So these bells tend to be red or bright orange. So I'm going to find the gradient colors. I'm quite happy with that. And I'm going to make a little white highlight in the middle like that. And I'll add a little dot in here so that this goes darker around the edges. Okay, so we're starting to get there. And if I move this and paint it so it's up a little bit from where it was. So I just painted it slightly off center to the north of where it was. And it makes it kind of pop out a little bit. Now I'm going to do this ambient occlusion thing again. Very similar to what I did before. I'm going to make a layer underneath it. Lock the bell layer. Select my rectangle. or no, not rectangle. Oval tool. And my default gradient. And make a circle slightly bigger than the default circle. On the inside of the circle, I'll drag out the white so, and make it black or very dark brown at 30% alpha. And I'll make the outside black a very dark brown at 0% alpha. And there we go. I've got my ambient occlusion bell here. So that's pretty much done. I just need the top thingy for the bell. So I'm going to lock that, add a layer between the ambient occlusion shadow and the bell itself. And I'm going to draw in two colors with my brush. I'm going to draw this little pokey outy bit here and color that in. And with another color and with the fill mode selected to paint behind, I'm going to paint this bell dinger, if that's the technical term. Now, this, tech, uh, this tutorial is moving along quite fast because I don't want to... Uh, delay and bore people. I want to make sure it keeps a motion. So if you're getting quite lost or anything like that, make sure to just kind of pause or go bit by bit as you need to. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to paint this the colors that I actually want it painted. I'm using the random colors just so I can differentiate and separate them as I get the basic shapes in. So I want to get a gradient and I'll select this straight gradient and I'll paint it in there and I'll find the right colors. And again, I'll go for a bit of a metallic blue desaturated metallic blue quite happy with that and then I'm going to hit I and use the eyedropper and unlink it unlock it and paint that on the dinger on the bell dinger okay so I'm done so if I pop out here and I go to the main frame and make everything normal again not wireframe I'm pretty happy with that although it looks a little bit out of place that shadow is a bit too dark so I'm going to go in here Shrink my shadow to fit properly. I'm a bit happier with that. A little bit happier. Okay, so that's my bell. So I've got my bell there. I'm going to lock that. I'll wireframe them all again so I can see my sketch in the background. Add a new layer and I'm going to make my door. So you're starting to get used to the process and how I'm putting this all together. <clears throat> and my door, I'm going to start working on it over here so I can see it a bit more clearly rather than doing it on the side. Select a random color and get the shape and size that I want. Hit F8 and I'll call this movie clip door. Hit enter and enter the movie clip. So I have my own set of layers to work with. So with Z for zoom, I'm going to click and drag over the area of the door and I'm gonna start working on the door. So I, I'm going to, with the rectangle tool, start blocking in the layers of the door. So I've got this inside layer here. Select another random color. And paint that. And selecting another random color. I want the window to be about here and a plaque thing. What do we call that? And a doorknob. So I'll select an oval, make that the doorknob, holding shift to make it circle. 
Select another random color. Whoops, and I don't want the circle anymore. I want my rectangle and paint it inside. So the reason I've added these several layers is because you want grades of shading. And the other thing that's cool too is that this is all done on the one layer. All these rectangles are now part of the, the one shape. So if I click and drag a point in here, you'll see it changes both shapes. Okay, and that's the same with every part of this. Okay, so they're all part of the one thing now. So I'm going to find the colors and gradients I need. First, I want to work with the base color. So I'm going to select my oval gradient, my circle gradient, whoops. Hit K, which is the shortcut for the paint bucket and put it right in the middle there. Hit V and click on it to select it. And I'm gonna mess with the gradient. So it's a door, it's wooden. So let's go for a bit of a desaturated light woody color and slightly darker on the outsides, slightly saturated. There we go. So I'm pretty happy with that. That's my base door color. Hit I and click on the door. And so that's automatically added that gradient to my swatches and has it selected in my paint area. I'm gonna unlock it and make a darker version. So select this light area, just drag it into a darker, desatur uh, more saturated area. Select this darker one and do the same. And then hit K and paint it in the two places I want the darker gradient. Now they're misplaced because I can't have center the gradient in the middle because if I try and do that, I'll paint over where I already had it. The centers of the gradient are where I clicked here and here. So to move the centers of the gradient, I'm going to select and select my gradient transform tool, which is F, which is the shortcut. Click on that area and you can see that's where it's centered. I'm gonna change the size of it by dragging this in and moving it to the center. I'm gonna just do the same for this area here. Move it to the center. There we go. So that's the basics there. I'm fairly happy with how that's looking so far. I'm going to snip the edges here of this green because I don't want it to be that obnoxious. I just want a really kind of thin sliver of an even darker brown. So hit I to select that gradient, unlock it, paint it there, select that gradient and make it much darker on both of them. And then hitting F, click on that area, shrinking it and reposition the gradient. So as you can see, I've created these grades of brown. So I've got a darker brown for the very edge where the door is uh, kind of the, the opening of the door, but it's very slim. Then we've got these, the uh, bevel of the door created by these different shades of brown. And now I finally need to work with the uh, window, the plaque and the doorknob. Doorknob is quite simple. I'll select my round gradient, paint it there. And again, slightly north of the doorknob, just to give it a little bit more shape. Hit V and select it. And I just want to diffuse it by making the inside a slightly desaturated blue, a bit of a metal-y blue and then the outside darker like that. So I've created my doorknob there. Okay. And now I want to make this plaque. Now it's going to have a name, I suppose, because it's going to be a class. First things first, I'm going to select a gradient. So I'll select it, hit the default circle gradient and find a color that I want. I suppose as a sign, it's got to be a pretty plain sort of color. So I'll go with a sort of cream color like this. I'm going to copy and paste that whole thing and shrink it like that. Put it in the middle and center it like this. And I'm going to select the outside and make it darker. So again, the slow process of blocking everything out. So I've given a bit of a bevel to this plaque and I'm going to add a title to it. So I'm going to add a new layer on top, select my text and I'm going to call this Maths 101. That's a pretty common sort of classroom terminology, I think. Bring the size down. Oh. There we go. That's all I need. I'll bring it over to the left here because the, I know that the door is kind of chopped off at the end and I'm just gonna right click on it, break apart, right click on it, break apart. And that turns the text from a text format into a 
editable vector format. So I can drag these out and edit the letters. Now there's no purpose for me doing that other than the fact that if you guys access the, uh, the reference file, you might not have the font I used. So I've just turned it into a vector format so you don't need the font I used, it's just an image. And I'm just going to make this a word. Well, I mean, it is a word, but I'm just gonna find a color that fits the plaque that it's on. Okay, now I'm going to copy and paste this. I'm going to go into modify, shape, and I'm going to, where am I? Expand fill, and I'm gonna set it to inset two pixels, hit okay. Oops, that didn't work. I'll do that again, modify, shape, expand fill, oops. Modify, shape, expand fill. So it's a one pixel, because sometimes it can be a bit finicky. There we go, so it's made it very thin. Reason for doing so is now when I make this darker and I position it on top of the writing I had, I'll move it in such a way that it looks like it has a bit of an outside bevel. There we go. Okay, so that made it the, it needs a bit, bit more of a color contrast. So I'll select this basic one and make it lighter. And now when I drag this on top of here, it's much more of a bevel look. There we go, Maths 101. And the last thing I'm gonna mess with is this window of the door. Okay, so I'll unlock that and lock my text layer. And with this selected, I'm going to get my gradient, just a default gradient like this. Now I know that the walls are a certain color. So if I go outside here and I unlock the wireframe, I can see that this orange is the color. So I'm gonna go back in the door and I'm gonna make two things happen. First of all, I'm gonna select this gradient and I'm gonna base it on the outside wall color, but a bit darker because it's in another room like that. Okay, so I've got the basic gradient happening. Now I'm gonna make a new layer above this and I'm going to copy this panel in particular, then lock and paste. So this panel being the inside of the window of the door, and I'm gonna move it exactly above the other one and selecting a gradient base, I'm gonna paste it uh, on an angle like that. Then I'm gonna select it and with the white on both ends, I'm going to put random intermittent things throughout this gradient. And going in here, I'm going to every now and then turn it down to 0% every second one, like this. Okay, so this has created a bit of a bit of a glassy look. Now it's a bit extreme at the moment, so I'm just gonna move things around and I'm gonna really soften it. But rather than soften it manually by moving the percentages, I'm just gonna select this, hit F8, and I'll call this door glass, hit enter. And now I can just simply go over here to the color effect and go alpha and bring the alpha down. There we go, and I've got a glass pane over the door. Done. Pretty easy. It's turned out all right. So I'm gonna go back in here again, unlock everything. And now what I'm gonna do is add an ambient occlusion to the door. Now rather than do it all from scratch, I'm just gonna go inside my window, copy this layer with the ambient occlusion and go out and just make a new layer underneath everything which is locked now. Hit paste. So I've got my ambient occlusion. So I'm just gonna delete the inside edges so I can see a little more clearly as to where the ambient occlusion is. I'm gonna select it, go modify, transform, flip, vertical. And I'm going to shape this ambient occlusion to fit the door. Now, if I drag it down, you can see how, I'll show you over here. You can see if I drag it down, it doesn't change the width or size of the edges, but it does for the top. So instead of touching that, I'm just gonna delete the bottom because they've got that weird angle on the edges, select it from side to side and just drag it down without having the top selected. And you can see how that keeps everything fairly conformed. And now I can select this and drag it to shape, to fit the shape of the door. And there we go, whoops. Don't know why it's disappearing on me there. Okay, that's kind of strange. I'll hit my eyedropper and paint it so that it's all the one thing. It's being a little weird. Eyedropper, paint, eyedropper, paint. Okay, see, because if I hit wireframe, 
there was a divided gradient. I'm going to drag this and put it behind the door. I'm going to make sure it's a proper size. And that was the problem. It wasn't not working. It was just hidden behind the door. And there we go. I've got a simple ambient occlusion to the door now. So that's a bit more placed. Now I'm just going to angle this, skew it by tweaking the edges and move it. I'm going to skew it again a bit more on that angle. And we can see that we've got the basics of our door. I'm going to wireframe everything except for the door so you can see where it's meant to fit and make sure it fits in the right way. Make sure it fits the line of the ground. Make them visible. Okay, I'm going to go inside here and just clip the bottom ambient occlusion area just because I've got that at the moment so that it overlays, which I don't want it to do. So I'm just going to click and drag and delete that ambient occlusion area. I'll go back out. Okay, so I've pretty much got things how I want it. Okay, except this bell is in a bad place. So I'm going to move the bell on top of the door layer and I'm going to drag it a little bit to the side. Make sure my door name, door layer is named door and lock them. So it's starting to come together. We've got our floor, our wall, our windows, our door and our bell. With those wire framed and locked, we can see that all we really have left to do are the lockers and then we can add some details. So the lockers are a bit tricky because we're going to be using duplicates here. Um, so I'm going to set it up so that I can immediately work on one while working on all of them at once. That being said, I will do that by creating the base. So I'll get a basic shape of the full height of this locker, which is about this. Okay, I'll drag it out. I'm going to zoom in to fill the screen and then I'm going to shift click, oh, sorry, control shift, click drag the corner and I'll perspective it in at the top very, very slightly just very slightly because what I'll be doing is by hitting F8 and turning it into a movie clip called Locker, hit enter, I can now copy and paste this and line it up with each other, line them up. So you can see how that's got that divide that kind of wedges out. I want to skew it so that it removes the wedge like this and I want to close the gap. Okay. Good, that sort of worked. Sort of. So just to be clearer about it, I'm going to in, enter my my base, my locker base, copy and paste the same shape on the front and make it much lighter. You can see how it's editing the other one at the same time. And fill it so that I have a bit of a border so I can see a bit more clearly as to what's going on. Okay. So now with that selected, I'll copy and paste that one, bring it over here skew it on the edges to remove that wedge. Good, that worked. So we can see that it's giving itself this perspective. Okay, so let's do that again. Copy and paste the main default one, the base. Skew it to fill that wedge. It's got to be nice and smooth. We want it to be nice and smooth. There we go, and I'll skew it on the edge so it starts to curve around with the floor. And now I'm going to select both of these at once, copy and paste, and hopefully it should be simple if I edit both at once. So I'll skew it to get rid of that wedge, skew it on the edge just to go down a bit. And this should be working, just make sure all the corners line up and that it all follows the, the line of the floor. Okay, so now if I zoom out to 100%, you can see that I've created this block of lockers. So I'll unwireframe them, and I'm pretty happy with how that works, in the sense that they follow their own little perspective, that little skew. It gives it a bit more of an organic shape. It's much better than just having rectangles. That would look pretty stale, let's be honest. Okay, so now I can shape this whole group of lockers together all at once. Okay, so I'm going to drag this out like this. I'm going to, with all of them selected, hit F8 and I'll call it Lockers with an S. So that's one movie clip now. Now I enter that movie clip and I've got all the individual lockers. I'm going to right click and distribute to layers. 
and to delete that blank layer. And you can see I've got a layer for each locker. Here we go, quite simple. So I wanna make this default locker on the top layer. And now I'm gonna go in and start editing it. So I'll zoom in, enter here. I don't want it to fill up that much. I'll click and drag. There we go, so it fills the screen. And I'm gonna start messing with the lockers. Now the color itself, it works pretty well. If I hit control enter, I can see how it all looks and I'm pretty happy with it, but I, I think that green is a bit strong. So I'll go more desaturated and a bit darker. And then this inside one, desaturated and lighter. Let's control enter test. It looks all right. Pretty happy with it. I wonder what it looks like with blue. Let's change this to a blue. Let's see if it, let's see if I prefer that. Control enter. Yeah, I think that looks a bit more school-like. Oh, or does it? Maybe I prefer the green. <laughs> I've made up my mind. I think I prefer the green because it's more colorful. I'll go with that. Whatever. Okay. So pretty happy with that. So now I'm going to lock this bottom layer and delete the inside segment of this, like that. See, I've divided it into top and bottom, essentially. I've cut that middle in half and I can test that and it's created these top and bottom lockers. And uh, I don't like exactly where the line is, so I'll undo that and I'll just move my line down very slightly to about there. I'll test that. I prefer that. Okay, good. Good. Okay. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this to wireframe. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that. Never mind. I'm going to lock that layer. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to start messing around with the details of the locker itself. So hitting the eyedropper and selecting that color, I'm going to go slightly lighter, fill in this, well not fill in, but click and drag a locker area like that. So I've got a slightly lighter locker area, slightly more desaturated, it's a bit nicer. And I'm going to hit my eyedropper, select this dark area and draw a few rectangles like this. I won't draw them manually. I'll draw the first one and copy and paste it just so that they're all the same size. You don't want to leave it too much just to guesswork since they're all modeled after one another. And copy and paste that there. Okay. And I will hit I, select this slightly mid-tone green. Oops. I'll remove that line, I shouldn't have done that. And draw in where the padlock goes. That'll create a bit of a bevel. Hit I, go back to my rectangle tool. Do this. I'm starting to get there. Okay, and next I'm gonna draw my padlock. Uh, so my padlock should be circle, shouldn't it? Yes. So I'll select a base of a gray like this. Shift drag the circle. I'm just gonna make it larger on the side here. I'll shift drag a lighter circle on the inside, a bit smaller. And I'm going to, with the brush tool, draw, make sure that's set to paint normal without the lock. I'm just gonna draw a whole bunch of these random little lines draw a circle in the middle and draw the padlock top. I'll just keep redrawing until I get the shape I want because it's fairly particular. Okay, and then with a lighter color, I'll just paint a highlight like this. And I'll just keep redoing it until I get exactly what I want. Good. And then add a few little highlights with white. I'll select this, hit F8, call it padlock, hit enter. So I've got my padlock, I'll resize it, holding shift and plonk it there. And now I can select this whole thing, hit F8 and I'll call it locker front. Hit enter, copy paste and bring it down to the bottom resize it to fit well in the way that I want. And there we go, we've got the tops 
and the bottoms of these lockers. Pretty happy with that. So I can go back into this and I can see that it's all laid out. I don't like how it's sized because this outside darker area takes up too much area. So I'm going to select everything else and drag them to take up more of the space. And like that. Now, when I go out, actually I won't have been done yet. I'll, whoops. I'll click and drag this top locker down. Oops, I'm resizing a bit too drastically. Down. What I'm doing really is um, thinning out that these edge, these bevel lines. And it's taking a little bit of fiddling. Okay, now I go out. And I'll move this down. That's pretty much what I want to do. It's still a little too drastic. <laughs> See, it's a really quite fiddly process, isn't it? There we go. Okay, I'm happy with that. So there we go. I've got my lockers. And I'll go out. So I've got the basic setup. <clears throat> I'm going to start adding a few more details. So I'm going to move my bell around. Let's start moving things around a bit. So I'll move my bell. Skew it like this. There we go. Pretty happy with that. What else do I want to do? We've got the basic look of it. Let's test it. Control enter. In the context of these characters, it looks pretty good. Nothing too complicated about it. Um, okay, so let's mess with the color of these lockers. So I'm going to select it. And over here on the left, I'm going to go to my filters panel. And I'm going to hit new. And I'm going to go adjust color. I'm going to bring down the saturation. I'm going to mess with the hue to see what else works. So a, bl a light desaturated blue, that metallic, works all right. That's not too bad, actually, a kind of khaki color. I don't mind it. It's not bad. It does look a bit flat, though. So maybe I'm not a huge fan of it. Let's keep messing with the hue. Pink is not a hue I want. So I'm just kind of testing, see what, see what I like. I'll bring down the contrast, bring up the brightness, see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to do one last edit thing. I'm going to go inside here, inside here, and inside my locker front clip. And I feel like it needs another layer to add to the bevel. So I'm going to select my rectangle tool with the line and with no fill and draw a rectangle around here. Then with my eyedropper, select and paint inside the middle. See how I've created another layer of color. Then I'll just select that whole area and remove the line just like that. So now when I go out and out, it's created another layer, another level to the bevel. Another level to the bevel. There you go. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think removing the contrast wasn't the best idea. So I'll bring those back to zero. Test that. And that's pretty decent. Quite happy with that. Okay. Now I'm going to mess with the first two things that we drew. I'm going to lock everything. First, I'll name this lockers. I'm going to lock all of it except for the wall and back wall. Sorry, wall and back. Back wall and floor. I'm going to select the back wall, hit F8, and I'm going to call this wall. Hit enter. I'm going into this clip. I'm going to create another layer on top with a rectangle tool and a gradient selected. Oops. And a gradient selected. I'm going to draw an area here like this. I'm going to change the gradient to go like this. I'm going to change the bottom of the gradient to be black 0%, sorry, dark brown 0%, and then the top one to be dark brown 30%. This creates a bit of a dark shadow. OK, 
Okay, so now when I go out, and it's a bit too strong, it makes everything look a bit gloomy. So I'm going to just drag it up to cover less of an area. And I'm going to make the main color of the room a bit brighter, a bit happier. Orange. I'll drag the inside out a bit. There we go. So that's a much nicer look. Fairly happy with that. I'll move this top gradient a little bit more. Okay, so I'm quite happy with how that looks. And now I'm gonna mess with my floor. So I'll select my floor, hit F8, and I'll call this floor, because this, these, the wall and the floor weren't made into movie clips. And going inside here, <coughs> I'm gonna mess with it a little bit. So I wanna add some ambient occlusion under the lockers. So to do so, I'm gonna lock this layer, add a new layer, I'll wireframe my base layer and draw a rectangle under the lockers. And with my paint bucket, I'm going to select this gradient that I've paint that I used before, paste it there, but just drag it out to a proper size and change the hue to a blue because the floor is blue. And now when I pop outside, you can see I've given it a bit of a ambient occlusion thing. I'll pinch it so it's smaller. Okay, now we're going to get a bit fancy. I'm going to select my lockers. First I have to unlock it, copy, then lock it. Go into my floor layer. And now this is a bit tricky. I'm going to create a new layer and paste. So I've got my lockers here. Now I'm going to create a mask and I'm going to make these look like a reflection, which makes the floor look really shiny. So to do so, I'm going to select the base, whoops, the base area where the floor is, copy by hitting Control Alt C, that copies the frame exactly where it is, create a new layer on top, Control Alt V. Okay, so it's just put the bottom on top, it's a duplicate of it. Let me just recap that. So I've got my bottom layer, I selected that layer, Control Alt C, made a new layer on top, Control Alt V, it made it an exact replicate. Now with this locker layer, I'm just going to right click on the uh, replicated floor and hit mask. Okay, so the locker looks like it's disappeared. It hasn't. I'm going to unlock my mask and move my lockers. Modify, transform, flip, vertical. So I'll flip them upside down. I'm going to drag them, oops, shrink them in and move them so that they are mirrored like this. And now if I lock my mask, you can see how I've given it that look, how it's reflected. Now, the lockers are too strong, so I'm gonna unlock it and move down here. I'm gonna select this and bring in some alpha. So in the color effect, go alpha, bring it into, let's say 30%. Now when I lock it and I bring in my ambient occlusion and I go out to my main frame, you can see that I've got this shiny floor with the reflected lockers. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so next I'm gonna add a little bit of texture to the floor just so it has a bit more of a solid look on its own so it's just not this reflecty surface so i'm going to do this within the mask because i want it to stay within the areas that have defined now you can see when i add a new layer which isn't locked it uh, essentially unlocks the whole thing thing so i'm just going to hide the layer uh, mask base and then the locker reflection so that the mask essentially is non-existent even though i'm working within the mask at the moment I'm going to select a flat color, a dark desaturated blue, and I'm going to, hmm, I'm going to use the line tool with the line painting that dark desaturated blue, whoopsie. I'm going to draw a bunch of lines like this. And rather than redraw them again and again, I'm just gonna copy those lines, paste, select them all, copy, paste, Select them all, copy, paste. You get the idea. Make sure that they're fairly evenly spaced. Select them all, copy, paste. Okay, so I think I've got enough lines now. Okay, so I'm going to just delete the top and bottom chunks so that it's all perfectly flat. And now what I can do is Control shift with a V selected and drag it out like that. Gives it some perspective. And now I'm going to drag, whoops, I'll zoom out to 50%. I'll drag it out so that it fills the entirety of the floor. 
So now, if I make my mask reappear and then lock it all, you can see how I've created this floor, this perspective look on the floor. Okay, now it's a bit too strong, isn't it? So I'll unlock those, hide the other two, and I'll select these lines. I'm gonna go modify shape, convert line to fills. So that's made these fills now, they're not, whoops, they're not solid lines, they're fills. I'll select these fills and I'll make it 30% alpha. So it's much lighter, I'm quite happy with that. And now I'm just gonna add a top gradient. So I'm gonna lock those. I'm going to select my basic base floor, add a layer on top. So with Control Alt C, I'm going to move to the top. Control Alt V. I've replicated my whole floor again, and I'm just going to select a flat gradient, move it, put it in there, and I'm going to make the inside kind of a dark blue at 30% alpha. And I'm going to move that into 0% alpha at a medium. And then at the edge, I'm going to make it a white at 30% alpha. Let's see what this looks like. Okay. I'm fairly happy with that. Let's make that white 50% alpha. What does that look like? Quite glossy. Okay. I'm pretty happy with how that looks. So now when I go out to this main timeline, I'll hit control enter and I test. And there we go. We've got my school area. Now the floor looks a little bit too mirror-like, a little bit too glossy. So all I have to do to remove some of that gloss is select my lockers, these, whoops, these lockers, bring the alpha down, let's say 10%, and then control enter, let's test that. Uh, maybe that's a bit too much that I've disappeared, make it 15%, let's test that. I'm pretty happy, let's make it a happy 20. Test. All right, fantastic. Now I can't just do that and not mirror the door because the door too should be reflected, shouldn't it? So I'm gonna select my door, go back into my floor, make a new layer and paste it. Modify, transform, flip vertical. Resize it, scale it in a bit and move it there. And with these layers locked, there we go, so that works. And again, it's too full, sorry, too visible. So I'll bring the alpha and again, 20%, which is it's already set to. Lock them and pop out. And there we go, let's test this. Control enter, and we've got a nice background ready to animate in front of. So it's pretty, it's pretty simple. I hope this tutorial has been useful. It's taken me about 50 minutes from scratch to create this background ready to animate on. That's what it looks like in full. And you can access this in the reference files and uh, muck around with it yourself and see the, the layers. I've made sure to name everything. I'll name this base layer sketch so you can see what it started from. And I'm happy with the result. So just to, for the sake of neatness, I wanna make a new folder in the library and I'll call this background. Oops, background folder. And now if I click and drag, let me just make sure you can see this. If I click and drag all of these items into the background folder, now that means if I just select my background, I'll hop out to the main timeline so I can see where my characters are. If I select this background, hit copy and go into another flash file and hit paste, it will copy the background folder, keep everything as it's been named and layered and organized exactly as it is, nice and neat. And so let me show you in context, I will open up the file in which I've set up the basic animatic. So I'm gonna go here where the background is. Let me just lock and wireframe everything except for the background, which I'll unlock, which I'm gonna delete. So no more background. I'm gonna select this background, copy, come in here, hit paste, bam. Look, in my library, I have a background folder. Open that up, everything neatly named as I had it before. I just want to position my background properly in the frame. So that everything's in the shot and I'm happy with the result. Everything is hunky dory and worked exactly as I intended it to. So thank you for joining this video tutorial. I hope it's been helpful. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoy my videos. You can download the reference files from this tutorial by clicking the link in the description. And remember to share any art, animation or game you make on newgrounds.com. Until next time, see you later.